Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw an infinity logo in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with, I've created a new document, 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to left click the ellipse tool, and left click and hold shift to draw a circle. And just select the fill and remove that, and with the stroke selected, go into the swatches panel, double click any swatch, make sure that it's global so if we do update that swatch at a later date it will update every instance of that color within our document and then from the stroke panel just increase that stroke weight so let's go for 60 points and we'll move this to the left and then just left click and hold shift and alt to drag out and create a copy now i'd recommend turning on your smart guides you can go to view and just make sure that they're switched on. It'll just make lining up things a little bit later a lot easier. So the next step is to select your pen tool. And if you look to the right circle, you'll see the center is nicely marked there. Just left click and hold shift. Holding shift will ensure your line is at a 45 degree angle. And you can see that smart guide there in pink, nicely marking where this line touches the outside of the circle. So this point where my cursor is now, this is what we want to remember, and we want to left click here. Now if we select the direct selection tool, and just select this first anchor point that we created in the center, and hit delete or backspace. Now if we go into outline mode, that's command or control Y, you can see we have this random anchor point here. That's all fine. What we can do now is do the same again over here. So on the left circle, we click in the center, hold shift. Where it meets the edge here, we just left click. And then with the direct selection tool, we select that first anchor point and hit delete or backspace. Next, what we're going to do is join these two anchor points. So again, select the pen tool, left click on this first one and simply join it to that second one and it wants to continue this line just go up to select and down to deselect and you've got the shortcut key here so let's select this line in the middle go to edit copy edit paste in place and then object transform reflect and reflect it along the vertical axes and you should have something that looks like this now you can zoom in on this copy this second line and just hold shift and drag this into position so it lines up. Let's just move that there. Now, if you have these bits going out of the end, that's absolutely fine. Just use the direct selection tool to left click on this anchor point and bring it in so it lines up. So we'll do the same now up here. Just drag on that anchor point so it snaps to the outside of the circle. And then we'll go and do this corner as well. So we're just dragging that anchor point using the direct selection tool. And the last one, you can see here, it doesn't quite line up, it goes inside the circle. And we just drag that to the outside. And we can come out of outline mode. Remember that's command or control Y. And we have something that looks like this. Now the next step is we're going to go back into outline mode, command or control Y. And we're going to zoom in and just lock these two lines that cross over in the middle. So select both of those lines with the selection tool, go to object, lock and selection. Next, left click and hold on the pen tool and select the add anchor point tool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an anchor point right up here. So you see the circle comes around and it bends off away from this straight line. We're going to create an anchor point just before that circle starts bending. So we'll do one here as well. So we've created two anchor points, one at the top and one at the bottom. And we're going to select the direct selection tool and just drag over this space in the middle. So this is the part of the line between those two new anchor points. And if we hit delete or backspace, 
this is what it leaves us with. And we can go into outline mode or come out of outline mode with command or control Y. And we've got a bit of a gap here. That's okay though. What we can do is just zoom back in, select the direct selection tool, drag over both of these end anchor points by holding shift. Nope, that second one doesn't want to work. Ah, the reason that's not working, I'm dragging over this to select it, but we've still got this cross locked. So we'll need to go to object, unlock all temporarily. Well, I just join that up. So with the direct selection tool, we drag over both of these endpoints holding shift and go to object, path and select join. And it will join that up and we can come out of outline mode and it's all joined up. So again, if we go and lock where these cross over in the middle and back into outline mode, we can do the same for the right hand side. So let's select the pen tool with the plus icon and we'll create those additional anchor points, top and bottom. And then with the direct selection tool, drag over this center point, including this anchor point here and just hit delete or backspace. And again, go to object, unlock all. And now we can just join up these two end anchor points. And the last one, so we're left clicking, we're holding shift, left clicking again with the direct selection tool, going to object, path, join, and it joins them both up. So then ultimately, you've got something that looks like this. And if we go into outline mode, this is what it looks like. And what we can do now is select everything. And this is all still editable. So we can go and adjust the width even more. So we could go for 80, increase that weight. And we could even skew it out of shape if we wanted to. So we could stretch it a bit wider or make it a little bit narrower. It's entirely up to you. If you'd like to adjust the width from both sides, hold down Alt and just drag from the side. So we've got our infinity symbol. The next step is to select the direct selection tool. And we're going to select this anchor point here. So we could just drag over these and we'll drag over these two here at the bottom and we're going to go to edit and copy deselect that selection and then go to edit paste in place and we'll change this to red just for now and we can use the arrow keys and the mouse to move this up here now we're going to make the width of this line half of the width of the other lines so let's change 80 to 40 and press enter and in fact, we don't need the curves here, so we can select the very end points with the direct selection tools and hit delete or backspace. So we've just got this line, but it's at the same angle as the cross in the middle. So if we move this in nice and close, you might want to go and deselect your smart guides for this. This is the part that you'll probably have to do by eye. Zoom in nice and close. If you zoom in nice and close and you get it as close as you can, then when you zoom out back to 100%, it'll be impossible to tell the difference. So we can now change this red line to white. Now we've got it in the right position. And there we go. So we haven't cut it out yet, but we're creating the look for our logo. So we're going to do the same on this side. We'll drag this over. We're actually going to change this back up to 80. And this is where our arrowhead is going to appear. So again, I'm just going to pick another color for now. Zoom in nice and close. Just make sure that this touches the line. I think I'll switch my smart guides back on now I've done that. And then just change that to white. Next, I'm going to left click and hold on the ellipse tool and select the polygon tool. Just left click anywhere on the artboard and create a new polygon with three sides. That will create a triangle and I'll remove that stroke, select the fill and then pick the same black color as the rest of the infinity symbol. So we'll move this down here and you can use the direct selection tool to select that top anchor point 
and then drag this up or down depending on the type of triangle that you're trying to create. So something like this. And then we can hold shift and rotate the arrowhead. So it sits here and we'll just scale this up holding shift. And you want to make sure that these widths here, either side are equal. So we don't have our arrowhead on the wonk. We have it nice and central. And again, you can adjust the size. So hold down Alt and Shift and it will scale up from the center. So if you adjust the size, you don't have to keep recentering it. And there we go. We've created our infinity symbol or the shape of it at least anyway. So the next step is to now finalize this logo and add some color. So you can see that if I add a big block color behind the logo, it looks like that. And that's not really any good. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this pink here and just temporarily lock this layer. The reason we're using pink is because we can see how our logo actually looks against the background. So we'll know when it's been finished correctly. So first of all, I'd recommend just dragging a copy of this by holding Alt all the way over here and just keeping an editable version. If you do decide to change the stroke width later on, it's always handy to have a version there that you can still edit. So we'll start by selecting both of the white lines holding shift and we'll go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. Next, we're going to go to the Pathfinder panel and unite these two white shapes to one and go to object and compound path and select make. This will now treat these two separate white shapes that don't touch as one path. So that's what a compound path is. It joins them together even if they don't touch. Next, we're going to select our infinity loops. So the black shapes go to object, expand, the fill and stroke selected and click OK. So this is how it looks at the moment in outline mode. Remember that's command or control Y. So we've got our black loop, our black arrow and our white shape. Let's select the white shape, hold shift and select the black loop with the white shape on top and in the pathfinder panel, select minus front. And it will knock out those white shapes from the black loop shape. And with that loop selected, we can then hold shift and also select the arrowhead and in the pathfinder panel, unite those together. So we've now got this as one complete shape and with everything selected, just go to object, compound path and select make. So we've got this all looking correct. We can now go to object, unlock all and remove our background. So we're going to finish this off with some color. So let's select our infinity symbol. And in the swatches panel, let's just double click on a swatch and we'll select this as global. And we'll double click on another swatch. We'll select this as global as well. And then lastly, we'll do one more double click and select global. We can drag this swatch up as well. So they're all nicely together. And if we select the gradient panel, we can left click on the gradient slider and it will apply the default black to white gradient. Now you see these swatches at the bottom of the gradient slider, just double click on one of those and it will load up the swatch panel and we can now add our swatches. So we have the blue one and we can click anywhere along this gradient slider to add a new one. We'll position that at 50%, double click on the swatch and we can select the darker blue and then double click the last one and we can select the purple. And we can also reverse this gradient by clicking this icon here so it will swap them around. And because we created these as global swatches, if we go and amend the color of these swatches, it will update within our design. So we can go and adjust the color here and we'll change the color of the darker blue in the middle. And then lastly, the purple. 
So once you've created the gradient, as long as you've got global swatches, you can change them and adjust them to however you like, and it will just update them within your design. And there we go, that's how to draw an Infinity logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.